All right, Geraint, a nice physics question this week. In Einstein's special theory of relativity, can we deal with objects that are accelerating? The answer is yes, um, although sometimes it's not quite clear to people that mm. this is the case. Uh, part of the issue is, is that you know, when you get taught special relativity, mm -hmm. what you talk about are objects moving with relative velocities. So you talk about inertial frames, laboratories moving with a certain velocity in a certain direction, yep. and you talk about how does the observations of that particular observer compared to the observations of a different observer moving at a different velocity. Mm -hmm. And we don't really talk about how you accelerate to those velocities. Yeah. And when people encounter acceleration in relativity, it's normally when we're talking about the basics of general relativity. Yeah. So when we're talking about general relativity, we're talking about gravity, we're talking about things falling, and naturally there's a discussion of acceleration. And that it gets a bit messy because um, you have to be careful by what you mean by acceleration when you talk about relativity, okay? Now, when we come to another uh, a chat, we'll talk about acceleration and gravitational fields, but here we want to talk about acceleration in terms of Einstein's special theory, which is flat space-time, mm -hmm. so no gravitational fields. So what I mean by acceleration in this case is what happens if you take an observer, you strap on a rocket pack, yeah. and you fire that rocket. Okay. okay, so let's just review some of the basics here before we talk about acceleration. How do we talk about an observer who's just moving at some constant speed through space? Okay. Um, when we deal with special relativity, it's not the motion through space that's the most important thing, but it's the motion through space-time. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about an object in Newtonian physics, we talk about their velocity, which well, is the rate of change of their uh, direction mm -hmm. and we know that there are three dimensions we talk about velocity in x velocity in y velocity in z yep when it comes to special relativity we need to add on that extra dimension because we're talking about space time yep. not about space so you not only have components of velocity in space but you also have a component of velocity through time mm -hmm. which seems kind of strange but in reality what you have is that these velocities these are being taken with regards to a clock being carried by the person that's moving mm -hmm. so it, it's we won't go through the mathematical formulas and we just need to remember that when we talk about velocity we're really talking about velocity through space time and it has four components mm -hmm. so we have vectors like we have vectors in newtonian physics in special relativity, but they're called four vectors because they have four components. Right. This velocity through time is a bit confusing when you start off in special relativity, but the way I like to think of it is if, if clocks move at different rates, then it makes sense to say, how fast is that time moving with respect to my time? And then you've got a sort of time with respect to time Absolutely. Uh, thing. Absolutely. And this is where, of course, time dilation comes from, is when you look at this velocity through time. Right. So the next stage then is to ask yourself, well, I've got my four velocity. Mm -hmm. Then if I'm going to talk about accelerations, then what I'm going to need is a four acceleration, mm -hmm. which is essentially the rate of change of my components of my four velocity with time. Right. Okay. This is where things get slightly messier. Right. Okay. So let's go back to our Newtonian physics mm -hmm. and we've already mentioned that uh, you have velocity through space so you have a vx a vy a vz three components of your velocity and you know that if you take those components you square them and add them up and take the square root that gives you the total velocity mm -hmm. through through space in Newtonian physics right we usually call that speed right yeah Oh, but uh, the correct speed. We could talk about the direction as well, but it's a, it's a speed. Right. Okay, so we can actually do a similar thing in uh, general relativity, where we calculate the speed through space time. Right, and it's essentially the same process as calculating the speed in three dimensions, except there's this messy minus sign hanging around. Yeah. So it's it's like Pythagoras adding up the squares and taking the square root, but there's a minus sign that goes in front of that component of velocity, mm -hmm. which belongs to time going through time. And it turns out that one of the cool things is, is that when you measure the speed of any object that has mass traveling through space time, mm -hmm. you get a constant value. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get um, essentially the speed of light squared. Right. Okay. There's a plus and minus sign wandering around here. Let's not worry about yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> so it turns out that 
you and I are traveling through space time, right? At the speed of light at sea. Right. Now, this is kind of bizarre because we're sitting here still. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we would say that our component of velocity through space are, are equal to zero with respect to us. Yeah. Which means that that time component must be traveling at sea in the, uh, in the time direction. Right. But somebody moving with respect to us, they have their velocities in space. So they have their vx square vx vy vz Mm -hmm. and their component of their velocity through time as seen by us must have a particular value such that their total speed through space time is still equal to the speed of light right okay does this sort of make sense this is kind of uh, it's another way of thinking about time dilation isn't it it is so um as as they have more velocity through space, they kind of lose a bit of velocity through time. That might be a, a bit of a hand wavy way of thinking. It, about in it. fact, it's messy in that that minus sign that comes in. That's the thing that makes a mess of it, essentially right. everything. Okay. Right. So now we've got this nice simple notion <laughs> of full velocity right. made of these components, but the speed is always constant. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the the speed through space time doesn't change. Right. That's the important part, and this is an invariant quantity this is what relativity is all about what quantities do you have that everybody agrees on yeah everybody agrees on the speed through space time so now we want to talk about acceleration we want to talk about a four vector that is the rate of change of these components of the speed through space time right which is slightly bizarre because we've already said that the speed is equal to zero Mm -hmm. But we can have a four vector that changes the components. So the four acceleration can change the components of the uh, four velocity, mm-hmm. right? But leaves the speed exactly the same. Right. Right. Let's let's. And I know this starts to sound about a little bit messy, but let's go back to something we all understand from from classical mechanics. Right. An object moving in a circle. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what we remember, an object moving in a circle has a force acting on it, which points towards the center of that circle. Mm -hmm. And that force produces an acceleration, which also points towards the center of that circle. Mm -hmm. It has a velocity, which is tangential to the circle. Mm -hmm. And that um, acceleration continuously tugs on the velocity and changes its direction. So you move around in a circle. But the speed going around the circle is a constant. Mm -hmm. So the direction of the velocity keeps changing, Mm -hmm. but the magnitude of the velocity doesn't change. Right. Okay. So what we have when we deal with acceleration in special relativity is exactly the same circumstances, but the for velocity is orthogonal, what, 90 degrees to, right, the for acceleration Mm -hmm. in space-time. Right. Okay. So what happens is, is that your acceleration changes the components of your four velocity. So relative to me, something will get faster and faster and faster. Yeah. But that will also modify the velocity through time Mm -hmm. such that the magnitude of the four velocity remains the speed of light. Okay. So I think we can put all of that together. So we've got this, we've got ordinary velocities, three of those, and we add on this extra uh, time component to make a four velocity and the length of that four vector always stays the same correct and so if that's true that's true even when there's an acceleration happening and so the acceleration better can change things between these components internally but it better not change the overall length of the thing that's right so for that to happen, what we call that within mathematics is that the two vectors are orthogonal. Basically, you can shuffle things around, change the direction, but not change the length. Okay. So the other interesting thing is, is that we have this acceleration for vector, and we can also calculate its magnitude. Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, this is one of the, the things that happens in relativity, is that um, when you look at a vector in space-time, Mm-hmm. Everybody agrees on the length of the vector, but they disagree on the components. Right. Right. Which is what we mentioned with the four velocity is that um, I have my own particular four velocity, which is 
zero with respect to me except for my motion through time yep. somebody else moving with respect to me will say no you're not stationary you're moving and therefore we get a different velocity through time for you okay. so you get time dilation you can also measure the length of the acceleration vector and people will see different components for the acceleration mm -hmm. but everyone agrees on the length and what does that length correspond to so let's take the viewpoint of the person with a rocket pack yeah on their back okay they too have their uh four acceleration term yeah so what does it look like for them mm -hmm. now remember that their four velocity the components in space are equal to zero yeah. with respect to them and they only have their component in time right you know you're always stationary with respect to yourself yes yes uh, well, sometimes i don't feel like i'm stationary <laughs> with respect to yourself, but other than that when sober when, always, <laughs> yeah. um then uh what does their four acceleration look like mm -hmm. Well, therefore, acceleration must be orthogonal okay. to that vector, which means it points in the spatial direction, but nothing in the time direction. Right. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that that person is experiencing the acceleration, which is the length of that vector. So okay. that's the things that makes the this kind of thing when they're accelerating, right? right? Okay, good. So you have... We'll make a gif of that later. Yeah. So you have this um, acceleration term, that person feels that acceleration yep. right but to other people the components of the acceleration that they calculate will be different okay right because of uh everybody sees different components of vectors okay so let's actually set up a, a you know let's stick you a in a rocket pack let's stick you on earth and then you shoot off into the universe um what actually so, and you've got a clock with you and right. i'm watching your clock and you're watching your clock what, what do we see? Okay, this is where get, things get very interesting. Now, remember when we spoke about um, orthogonal velocity and acceleration in Newtonian gravity, uh, New Newtonian physics, yep. that resulted in circular motion. Right. So when we talk about orthogonal velocity and acceleration in space-time, mm -hmm. because of this minus sign, we don't get circles in space-times, but we get hyperbole, mm -hmm. okay? hyperbolic motion. So I'm going to draw a picture. Very good. Okay. They're just and, over there. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to draw a, a, a diagram, which everyone will be familiar with. Uh, some Hopefully. Okay. Space-time diagram. Okay. So here we have space and here we have time. So this is a laboratory. This yeah. is somebody's clock. Ticks off in the laboratory. Yeah. Okay. This is space. What kind of motion does this person with constant acceleration have? Now, in classical physics, somebody with a constant acceleration, their velocity just gets larger and larger and larger over time. Yeah. When we look at this, this motion in, um, in the flat space of special relativity, mm -hmm. what we get is hyperbolic motion. Right. Okay. So here's our, our rocket ship. We'll start here. We're going to fire the rocket mm -hmm. and we're going to move off through space time. So if we stayed still, we would just trace out a track. Yeah. Right. Same position, different time. But our acceleration is going to give us motion and it's going to look like that. Right. Okay. So what we have is that this person get, is moving and they're moving, uh, they're accelerating and they're feeling constant acceleration. Their cheeks are wobbling at constant wobble. Right. right? They're <laughs> whizzing along through the Euro, uh, universe. Um, but what we have is that their velocity in this coordinate system starts to flatten off. Right. Why does it flatten off? Well, because no matter how hard you accelerate, you can never go faster than the speed of light. Right. Okay? So the velocity sort of flattens off and flattens off and asymptotes towards the speed of light, which would be at 45 degrees in this right. picture. So slow velocity, that zero velocity straight up, and then as we go that way, we're going faster and faster, but we can't go past 45. That's right. Right. That's right. Okay, so... Uh, in that case, what happens as I'm, I'm, I'm standing here, this is me on Earth, and this is you off in your rocket pack, what happens as I keep looking at you? Well, if you keep looking at me, I can always send signals back to you. So mm -hmm. if you imagine light traveling from my rocket ship, 45 degrees, like so. Right. I can keep sending messages, and, and if I keep sending them out at regular pulses... You will keep receiving them, but the time between those pulses gets larger and larger and larger. Right. Okay. So you see time dilation in some, some effect. Okay. What's cool is me looking back at you. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm. So now I I shoot the light off in the other direction. That's yep. right. Let's uh, get note. rid of your light sent to me, and yeah. I'll send some light to you. Note to self: keep the uh, razor handy. <laughs> okay. So let's fire off some light rays. Light rays come at this way. We'll talk to the producers. Yeah. And again. Right. And eventually, there's a light ray we send off, which is that 45 degree path to which we're asymptoting to. Right. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that if I'm looking back at you and accelerating this way, I'm actually receiving your light rays, but I can't receive any light rays after this particular point. Right. So if I'm looking back at you, what I see is that you don't doing your stuff, you're acting and moving away, but your light rays then start to get spaced out more and more and more as they arrive at my rocket until there's a final time and I see you freeze. Right. And then you basically... You disappear from view because there are other relativistic effects going on here as well. Yeah. But uh, you would get to a certain point and then you would basically freeze and disappear. Right. This is very like what happens when you drop somebody into a black hole. Right. Yeah. Uh, when they pass through the event horizon of the black hole, mm -hmm. you see them fall. You, there will be light rays coming to you, but they will get more and more spaced out until there's a final light ray. There's a final time in their clock that you can see. And that's it. Right. And they eventually freeze and they disappear. Okay. So this, unsurprisingly, is a horizon. Okay. And it's known as the Rindler horizon. Yeah. And it's in exactly the same way as uh, you have the horizon in, um, in a black hole, you have this horizon in special relativity. So horizons are not only things to do with gravity. Okay. Horizons to do with how things interact with things and whether or not you can get light rays to reach them. Right. And so in this particular picture, you can get a horizon due to just accelerating away in the universe. So it's that same thing of light. So within a black hole, light can't reach the outside. And here uh, we're in flat space, but light after, you know, this, this is you take off at 1 p.m. and this is 2 p.m. After 2 p.m., I can't send I can't get a light ray to you. Interesting. OK. So with a little bit of uh, jiggery poker in mathematics, it turns out we can actually look at accelerations within special relativity. And it is very, very cool. It is a very interesting thing to look at. And uh, that the, the um, horizon is named after Her Rindler, mm -hmm. who was one of the great uh, relativists, mm. written some excellent work. And he wrote a paper in the 1960s, which is still one of my favorites, on accelerated motion in uh, in general space times, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, I, I actually think it's very beautiful. I think we should put a link to the the paper. I was just thinking we'll do that down below. So go look in the uh, in the in the description. Yeah.